Welcome to Slick Baggers YouTube channel. I'm Steve. Today we're going to be changing out the fork legs on a 2015 Heritage back here. Now this information can be applied to several different soft tail models out there, but today we are working on the 15 Heritage. I've got some chrome lower fork legs that are going on here, and we got some new chrome cans that are going on here as well. So this is already going to be kind of a lengthy video, so we are going to skip the BS, get the camera over here, and get to work. So if you notice back here, right off the bat, our bike does not have a tank on it. You do not have to remove your tank to do this. We're actually in the middle of shooting another video, and we're waiting on parts for that, just like always with the soft tail. So just disregard that. There are a few electrical clips that you need to get to that are underneath that tank but you do not have to pull the tank to get to them. You can release the tank bolts and slide the tank back, but we'll cover that here in just a little bit. They're just right up here under this neck to get to the headlight and the auxiliary lights and stuff like that. But the cross underline that's under here does not have to be removed to take the tank off to get to this stuff. So I'm just gonna quickly go through what we're gonna be doing here. I'm gonna speed this process up because taking the wheel and tire off is very easy and we already have a video on it. Taking off your wheel and tire and installing new fat spokes. So you can watch that video if you're not sure. The first thing we're gonna do is loosen our brake caliper. We're gonna protect it, move it out of the way. We're gonna take a 15 16th and we're gonna put it on here. We're gonna loosen this, being very careful of the ABS sensor that's on this bike. If you have an ABS sensor, be very careful of that wire. Then from there, we're gonna remove the four bolts, two on each side to remove the fender. Now to get to our pinch bolts for our fork legs, we gotta take these two bolts out right here, two on each side, and when we'll get to the wiring, I will slow that part down. So this is gonna be sped up until I get to the wiring. Once I get to the wiring, I'll show you which ones to unplug. It's very easy. You can just follow the lines coming out of the back right here to the headlight, follow the line that goes to the uh, auxiliary lights and the turn signals, unplug those, and we'll get this stuff removed. So I'm gonna throw on some jams here and get to work. Now that we got the front wheel off, we do have to deal with the fender light. You can take your front bolt out, your rear bolt out, and slide your tank back. You'll have to peel this rubber back a little bit, and you'll see right here all of these exposed wires. You're going to follow this fender light up. If you have one, you're going to disconnect it. We're going to pull it out. We're going to get it out of the way. While we're in here, we'll go ahead and follow this headlight wire back. When you peel this back, you'll see it right here. We're going to push the clip in and unplug it. On the other side of the bike, you got this one down here. If you pull the rubber back and unclip it, this one goes to your turn signals and your passing lamps. You can actually move the wire and see that and this one back here goes over to the other side. Now that we have all of that out of the way, that takes about 15, 20 minutes to get all that stuff off. We've got this little Motion Pro tool, has a little O-ring in the top that protects your chrome, but you've got these two bolts up here at the top, and uh, you're just gonna slide that on like that, and you can take a crescent wrench or whatever, because your bars are in the way, unless you're doing bars at the same time, which 
We are going to be doing bars on this bike and it'd be a lot easier for me to do it right now while I had all this stuff off. But in the spirit of making a video on how to just change fork legs, we're not going to mess with that right now. But the little Motion Pro tool right here, I will link down in the description down below. I'll link all of the tools that we use today down in the description down below. This right here just goes on. We're going to take a crescent wrench and then we've got a pinch bolt here and a pinch bolt here. Once we loosen those, we'll be able to slide the fork tubes completely out. Now, right here on top, you got a bolt here and a bolt here to remove the factory cans. You're gonna save those two bolts because we've got new cans going on. They go back on the exact same way you took them off. And I got these chrome fork cans. You can get pretty fancy ones with all different designs and stuff on them, but I got these. These are just kind of a uh, OEM version, just a chrome version and uh, pick these up from uh, Dennis Kirk is where we got these. I'll put a link to uh, Dennis Kirk's website down below in case you wanna check these out. Not super sure what the torque spec on those is. That's just a couple of bolts and a couple of aluminum cans. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't really mess with the torque specs on those cans. All right, so we've moved over to the workbench. We've got our new chrome fork leg here. Our old one is on the janky ass fork holder. And in case you were wondering, this is not made by Harley Davidson. Now you can buy one of those fancy ones like on JP Cycles, it costs you about 90 bucks. But if you're just doing this every now and again, make yourself one of these. You can find all this stuff at your local hardware store for about 20 bucks. So what we did is we just actually clamped the upper fork leg into the janky ass fork holder. Now we're gonna move to the bottom and drain the fluid. Right down here at the bottom, we're gonna have a Phillips head bolt right here. It's got a little cropper crush washer on the back side. This is a one-time use only. So if you pull this out, make sure that you have two new ones to go back in. What we like to do is just give this a little tap. It makes this a lot easier to break free. It is Phillips, so you don't wanna end up stripping this. Now, once you get that loose, make sure you have a pan underneath to catch all this oil. We're going to set that up there to the side. We're gonna open the top up to give it some air and we're gonna let that drain. Okay, once we have it drained, we're gonna loosen this quite a bit because we need to get the other end in there. Six millimeter in the bottom. I'm gonna remove it. Once again, one time use bolt only. We've got new ones to put back in there. I'll flip it back over. I'm gonna use the old vice grips here to put a little stank on that. Now we're gonna take a flathead screwdriver and get our little O-ring out. Simply work it around, pull it off. So once we have that bolt out of the bottom, that frees all of this up from being connected. So you can use this kind of like a slide hammer. It releases itself. You pull this down, you hear it bottom out right there. As long as that clip is out, we're going to hit this with like a slide hammer and it's going to bring this rubber bushing up and we can separate this. Just like that. Now I flipped the fork leg over because I want to show you a few things. We're just going to talk about the stuff that's on the outside here. When you take that lower fork leg off, we pulled and we busted that seal and it came off. Inside there, if it doesn't fall out, is going to be this little silver cap. This goes on the end right here. The six millimeter bolt that we took out of the bottom 
goes through the fork leg and then into this. It holds this in place, holds this in place. This is what your spring is on here. Inside here, this pushes on your spring. If we were to flip this over and take the top off, you've probably all seen the videos where you take the top off and it's under pressure and that cap pops. If we were going to be changing anything on the inside, we would have done that, but we're only changing the lower fork legs. And that's what today's video is about. On here, you're going to see your lower bushing, your upper bushing, a washer, and then your rubber fork seal. This rubber fork seal has to be replaced. Once you pop it out, just take it off, get you two new ones, put one back on. If you need to change out your bushings, you'll see this one here has a crease in it. You can take a flathead screwdriver and just kind of get under it and open it slightly and pull it off. And then your bottom one the same way. It's got a crease right here. Now, because those bushings are super cheap, normally I would just go ahead and change them anyway. If your bike has more than 10,000 miles on it and you're doing this, go ahead and get two new bushings. But with like everything else on this build, we've had to wait and wait and wait. We couldn't even get two new bushings for this from HD. So with the very low mileage that we have on this bike, I'm not really super worried about it. But these bushings can be changed and they are very cheap and it's super easy to do if you have them. So we're gonna take this off because when we flip this back over, that's just gonna fall off. We're gonna open up this. We're gonna make sure our washers and stuff are on the bottom, but we're gonna leave our rubber one on top so we can change it out real quick. You're just simply going to raise and pull this off. Now your new one, we're gonna get in here and I'm gonna show you, goes on one way. I'm gonna try to get this up into camera and get it focused on the O-ring. Right here on top, you've got little dots and usually there's some riding and stuff going around there. And on the other side, it looks like this. The dots and the riding go up. This is the top of the fork. So we make sure that the riding is up and we very carefully put these on. We're gonna push it on evenly until it's on. Do not force it on at an angle. You can tear up this rubber seal. Just make sure that you get it on evenly and then you can push it down. So we're gonna flip it over, put it back in. We're gonna take our chrome cap that came off there. We're gonna put it back on. We're gonna take our new fork leg, making sure you have enough space for this to actually bottom out. We're gonna slide this in and we're on the bottom right there. We're gonna take our new bolt and our copper washer. We're gonna dab just a little blue Loctite on there. Service manual doesn't even call for anything, so red Loctite is a bit much. We're gonna put this in. Gonna get it lined up. You can stick a screwdriver down here in the bottom to hold this, but it's 130 to 216 inch pounds. One ugga dugga. When it clicks, stop. Don't give it two, three ugga duggas. One. Okay, so we're just gonna jump ahead real quick to day two because yesterday when I was doing this, I got this nice fork seal driver from Amazon because I couldn't wait a week and a half for the Motion Pro one for the 41 millimeter because I do touring model bikes and not 41. Um, got this on Amazon. If you see this one with the orange stripe, do not buy it. It's listed as a 41 millimeter fork seal driver and it does not work. I didn't read the reviews, which I should have. I was in a hurry. I purchased it. Doesn't fit. Reviews say all of the 41 millimeters don't work. So if you see this, janky whatever otom racing td41 don't buy it so i had to run up to my local harley davidson black diamond harley davidson give them a little shout out because they were gracious enough to loan me a, a, a motion pro 41 millimeter fork driver and now we're going to get this job done so i showed you how to put the fork seal on a while ago we've got our fork seal we've got our washer our upper bushing our lower bushing we're going to take this cap that came out from the inside we are gonna set it on there. We're gonna slide this stuff down. We're gonna take our new base. We're gonna put it on, let it fall into place. We're gonna take our new six millimeter Allen bolt. We're gonna move this around till it catches. We can go ahead and set this back in here. I will set this in here to where my fender brackets are just kind of holding that in place. We're gonna to torque this 130 to 216 inch pounds.
We're gonna flip it over. We're gonna line up our fork seal. I'm gonna take our fork seal driver that actually works. And the fork seal driver is pretty heavy. So it just kind of basically acts like a hammer. So we're gonna pound this in. We're gonna pound that all the way in until we can see the groove that the snap ring sets in. This has to set in that groove. You really need to make sure that this is beat all the way in and that your snap ring here sets all the way fully in that groove. We're gonna take our ring and we're gonna put it in. You can use a small flathead screwdriver to help you guide this into place. You'll hear it click in, make sure that it's in all the way around. I'm gonna take you out the tripod real quick, but right here, this O-ring has to set in that groove. You'll feel it snap into place, but that's what it's gonna look like when you're done. Now, before we put the fluid back in, we need to replace the bolt that was in the bottom, the little drain bolt. You're gonna have to replace that those, with that copper washer. Like I said before, that's a one-time use. So we're just gonna put this back in. Now, once again, because we've only changing the fork lower, we're not actually removing this and pulling the guts out. On the soft tail has two caps, unlike the touring models. This cap has a hole in it where we can fill at the top, and this cap holds the spring under tension. We got about 11 and a half ounces of fluid going back in here because this is wet. We didn't completely take this apart, and we're putting back together a dry fork. I believe this one calls for 13 and a half ounces if it's dry. Um, it's obviously not dry. It's still got fluid in there stuck to the walls. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our 11 and a half ounces, we're gonna pour about half of it in there, and then we're going to put it down on the floor and compress it to work out any air bubbles and make sure that the fluid gets down into the bottom of the fork. Now, because our hands are all oily, we're gonna grab a rag we're gonna put it down on the floor on a blanket or something soft so we don't scratch our new lower. Put our hand on here. And we're gonna to start to slowly compress this fork. I'm gonna do this five or six times. It'll start to get stiffer every time we do it. The reason why we didn't fill this up is because we we're pressing fluid into the bottom. If we had filled this up, it would have just come shooting out of the top. So we're gonna give it one or two more. A <sighs> lot stiffer. All right, back over here again. Now that we've got it all primed up, we're gonna finish pouring in the rest of the fluid. Now, once again, we're gonna take this back off and we're gonna prime it four or five more times if we can. So we've taken our old rubber O-ring off. We're gonna take our new one. We're gonna put it on. Make sure that before you do this, that you pick these up and get these at Harley. They're, I don't know, less than a dollar. For now, we're gonna put this back in until we get this fork back in the box so we don't lose any fluid out of the top of that. We're just gonna put it back on get it hand tight we do have to take this back off to get it back on the bike so and from there this fork is done all we have to do is repeat the process on the other side so now we're ready to put our forks back on the bike we removed the upper screw if you look at the top of this cap it's got two flat sides on it so the most important thing about putting this back on is this cap up here has two flat sides one on each side that flat side has to be lined up with that hole right there if it's turned like this and you got the round side there when you get ready to put your headlight assembly bolts back in you'll bottom out on the side of this round thing so you want to make sure that this is turned the correct way the flat is right here we're going to push that up in you're going to have to give it a little wiggle it's going to crank this down a little bit we'll torque spec it later we just want to turn it until it's locked on so it doesn't fall out then your bottom ones, this just rotates on here. So you can just turn this the way that this needs to go. Take the top cap out. 
washer off. Slide this up in. Make sure our flat side is there. down turn the leg the way that it goes now we're going to take the top fork tube cap we have that brand new rubber seal on there our washer set it down in here we're going to do this on both sides i've already done that side to save a little bit of time These, these caps up here get torqued to 60 to 70 inch pounds on this model. Be sure to make sure to check your service manual for your torque specs. The pinch bolts on this get torqued 55 to 60 foot pounds. So that is it, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The biggest thing is, A, make sure that you get a service manual for your motorcycle, because all of these are different, your fluid levels are different, torque specs are different. Just because it's a soft tail, doesn't mean that those fluid levels and torque specs and all that stuff applies to every soft tail model on the market and year. So it changes throughout the years and across the soft tail models. You can download those service manuals pretty much online just about anywhere. You don't have to go out and buy a $130 service manual book from Harley Davidson. You can get online, Google it, your year, make, model, and you'll find a service manual online that you can download, put it on your phone, put it on your computer, whatever, have it out by your bike. The other thing is the specific tools. The only thing 
specific that you need on this a the fork seal driver don't get the one that i showed you in the video from amazon it does not fit 41 millimeter fork drill 41 millimeters fork seal driver from that company is is already on its way back to amazon so just hold out on the motion pro that one fits uh, thank God, like I said, we got to borrow one and get this job done. The only other tool that you specifically need is that long six millimeter Allen that goes on this side. Remember that side's closed up for the axle. You have to get something long in there. Um, you can get an Allen wrench in there if you can get that broke loose, but a lot of times that bottom bolt can be pretty tough to get broke loose. So make sure that you have the proper size. Do not try to use it with one that's just slightly different. You're gonna round that bolt out and you're gonna be having a bad day. So make sure that you get the proper one and make sure that it's a long one so you can get to that bolt. To get your torque specs, you are of course gonna need some torque wrenches. You're gonna need an inch pound and a foot pound torque wrench to do the things that we did today. I'll put a link in the description down below to all of the tools that we use today that are specific to this project. I hope this video was very thorough and it helped you, but if, if I missed anything, if you have any questions, you know the deal. Comment section down below, I'll help you the best that I can. I'm gonna get out of here and get myself cleaned up. I hope to see you in the next video, but until then, as always, be safe, keep your knees in the breeze. Thanks for checking out the video. Don't forget to hit that like and that subscribe popping up over here. And don't forget to check out the rest of the channel because we have a ton of bagger related and soft tail videos on our channel. And to get you started, maybe you can check out this one or this one. I'm not really gonna say anything else. You can just click one of those and take it over to another video.